Hello friends, this video on unit and measurement part 10 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched unit and measurement part 1 to part 9 before going ahead with part 10. We will now start another interesting topic on dimensions of physical quantities. What is dimension? Dimension of a physical quantity shows how the quantity is related to the seven basic quantities. In the previous slides, I have told you that there are two kinds of physical quantities. One basic quantities, the other is derived quantities. So the basic quantities, in the basic quantities we had meter, kilogram, seconds, ampere, kelvin, candela, mole. These were the basic units of the basic quantities. So dimension of a physical quantity will show how this physical quantity is derived from these basic quantities because any other unit will be derived from these basic units. So dimension of any physical quantity will show that. So how do we denote a dimensional formula? It is denoted in terms of M, L, T, etc. enclosed in a square braces. For example, M is used to denote mass, L for length, T for time, A for current, that is ampere, and so on. So let us take some example. For example, we take this physical quantity density. We know that density is equal to mass by volume. So how do we get the dimension for density? Now mass is written as the dimension for mass would be m. This is the dimensional formula for mass. Now volume is basically length q. So we can write its dimensional formula as L to the power 3. Therefore, density we can write as M divided by L to the power 3. We can write it as M L to the power minus 3. So this would become the dimensional formula of density. So this formula shows how density is derived from the basic quantities. These are the basic quantities. We will see few more examples of dimensional formula. Let us suppose you are asked to find the dimensional formula for acceleration. We know that acceleration is equal to velocity per unit time. Now velocity in term is equal to displacement per unit time. So this becomes displacement per unit time square. Now displacement will be denoted in dimensional formula by L and time will be denoted by T. So this will be T square. Therefore the dimensional formula for acceleration would become L T to the power minus 2. Let us see another example. Work. How do we define work? Work is nothing but force multiplied by displacement. How do we define force? Force is equal to mass into acceleration. Now mass will be written as m. Acceleration as we got it from here would be written as l t to the power minus 2. Displacement will be written as l. Therefore, the dimensional formula would become m l to the power 2 t to the power minus 2. Let 
let's take yet another example. Try to find out the dimensional formula for pressure. What is pressure? Pressure is force per unit area. Now, what is force? Force is again mass into acceleration. What is area? Area is nothing but length square. So, we can write it as m. For acceleration, we have l t to the power minus 2 divided by l square. So, this comes out to be m l to the power minus 1 t to the power minus 2. So, this is the dimensional formula for pressure. So, now I hope you understand how to get a dimensional formula for any physical quantity. First of all, you try to break the physical quantity into the very basic quantities. Then it will become easier for you to write the dimensional formula for the basic quantities and then get the dimensions for the physical quantity. Now, what do we mean by dimensional equation? It is nothing but equating a physical quantity to its dimensional formula. First you write down the dimensional formula for the quantity and then you just equate it to the quantity. That becomes the dimensional equation. For example, we find, we find out that for work the dimensional formula is this. So when we write W is equal to this, this becomes the dimensional equation. Similarly, for pressure, when we write P is equal to this, it becomes the dimensional equation. So, the conclusion of dimensional analysis is that a dimensionally correct equation need not be correct actually or need not be an exact equation, but a dimensionally incorrect equation must be wrong. So, if an equation is dimensionally incorrect, that means that equation can never exist, but if an equation is dimensionally correct, it might be that that equation is not correct because sometimes there are some constants also involved in an equation. So, dimensionally incorrect equation is always incorrect. Dimensionally correct equation is not always correct. Deducing relation among physical quantities. Let us take another example to show the application of dimensional analysis. We all know that the time period of a simple pendulum depends on the length of the pendulum L and the acceleration due to gravity G. Now if I ask you to deduce the expression for T with the help of dimensional analysis, how would you do that? Let us consider that the time period t is equal to some constant k, the length of the pendulum to the power a and the g to the power b. Because we already know that this t depends on l and g. All we don't know is what is the power of dependence. Now what we will do is we will equate the dimensional formula of both LHS and RHS. So, LHS, the dimensional formula would be this or we can write it as m to the power 0, l to the power 0, t to the power 1. In RHS, the dimensional formula would be l to the power a G is acceleration due to gravity, so the dimensional formula for G would be the same as acceleration. So it will be L T to the power minus 2 to the power B. So we can write this as L to the power A. This will be L to the power B T to the power minus 2B. Or we can write it as M to the power 0 l to the power a plus b t to the power minus 2b. Now we equate LHS and RHS. On equating LHS and RHS the powers of l. 
what do we get? Power of L in LHS is 0 and power of L in RHS is A plus B. So we get A is equal to minus B. Now we equate powers of T. So powers of T in LHS is 1 and in RHS is minus 2B. Therefore, B is equal to minus 1 by 2. Now putting this value of B in this equation, we get A is equal to 1 by 2. Therefore, the value of T will become K L to the power 1 by 2 into G to the power minus 1 by 2. That is equal to K root over L by G. So, we could derive the relation from this equation. Now, this K we considered as a constant which cannot be derived dimensionally. Let us now study dimensional and non-dimensional constants. Dimensional constants. There are certain quantities which have dimensions but they have a constant value. For example, speed of light. Speed of light is nothing but speed. So speed of light will have the dimension similar to that of speed that is lt to the power minus 1. But it will always have a constant value. It always has a constant value of 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second. Similarly, the gravitational constant capital G, it always has a constant value. But at the same time, it has a dimensional formula. How do we get the dimensional formula for capital G? Using Newton's universal law of gravitation. From Newton's law of gravitation, we know F is equal to G M1 M2 by R square. Or we can write G is equal to F R square by M1 M2. Now, we know that for F, we can write force as mass into acceleration. R square is nothing but length square divided by mass into mass. This mass and mass will get cancelled. So acceleration is Lt to the power minus 2. Again length square is L square and then m divided by m. So the dimensional formula comes out to be m to the power minus 1, L to the power 3 and t to the power minus 2. However, this g always have a constant value. So there are certain constants which even though they have a dimensional formula but their values are always constant. Then we will see the non-dimensional constants. There are certain constant quantities whose values are constant and they do not have a dimension. For example, pi. Pi has a constant value of 22 by 7 and it doesn't have any dimension at all. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks.